Yeah, we're at the track covering the sport of kings. Coming up this week, the latest from Jamaica's K Manus Park. TNT champion trainer John O'Brien on his latest Triple Crown Tram. Barbadian top jockey Patrick Husbands with a record win in the Ontario Damsel Stakes at Canada's Woodbine. Some Robert Hardball Halladine brilliance in the saddle at Thistledown in Ohio. Plus the weekly stats on Caribbean success on the North American continent. Our opening story from Caymanus Park in Jamaica. An 11-horse field for Saturday's second running of the Bridge 99 FM Cup overnight allowance for three-year-olds and up over seven and a half furlongs. The leading contenders are in the outside post positions. Number seven, I realize, the second favorite at nine to five, the nine-horse Cistrin Treasure, the six to five favorite. It's six to one, the odds on number 10, Sunset Silhouette, and five to two on number 11, last year's Derby runner-up, Brinks. In the com box, Brian Rickman picks up the call mid-race with a second favorite, I realize, in only his second start this year, taking control with Tevin Foster aboard. I realize, attempting to steal it, brings breathing down the neck of the leader. Morimoto bubbling up there into third spot. Sistrin Treasure now on the go, with champion Brubler rubbing the rail as they leave the three. Rins with the Grey is further back with Get a Pepsi, then Sunset Silhouette, Takapunt, Taurus Boy, El Professor has made some progress, but still remains last as the field come turning for home. It's I realize in the green and blue, continuing to fend them off inside the final three. 16th, the stick comes out in the right hand, and I realize continues to fight on. Here is Morimoto now coming with a charge on the outside. Reigns with the gray is over on the rail. Champion Bubbler in behind them. It is I realize from Morimoto needing to find a length and a half. Here is Reigns will now flying against the rail, but it is I realize driven flat to the boards, begging for the wire. Could have just got there over Reigns. Well, it's close. A really good ride this from the 29 year old Tevin Foster, currently the number three rider in the Kimana Spark Jockeys table but number one here as I realize gets a fifth career win and first this year well conditioned by trainer Alfred Brown. I realize by a short head denying the fast finishing 1991 outsider Rainsville a stunning upset win. Morimoto third at 15 to 1, 1 minute 32 seconds even the winning time for seven and a half furlongs. I realize owned by the trainer Alfred Brown together with Garfield Brown and Raheem Bacchus. A reflection now on the Trinidad and Tobago derby last week when the outstanding undefeated filly in the headlines completed the Triple Crown. But a suggestion from her trainer, John O'Brien, that the grandeur of the achievement was somewhat tempered by the current financial struggles of the racing industry in the country. Jockey Rico Hernandez here guiding in the headlines to trainer O'Brien's record-extending 11th derby win last Monday at Santa Rosa Park. It was also the champion trainer's third Triple Crown win and second in four years. He concedes, though, that while the Phillies accomplishment was exceptional, it would have been sweeter with a bigger purse incentive. In the days when the Triple Crown um, had a, a big cash reward of, of, of three quarter million dollars, it, it, it would have been more special. But it, it, it still remains special, I guess, for the history books. Um, and she's, I think she's a, a special filly. And even beyond the Triple Crown bonus that existed before, this Derby purse of 17,000 US dollars is only 22% of the 77,000 US on offer when Momentum's Derby win in 2014 gave a brand his first Triple Crown triumph. Still, the 20-time champion TNT trainer is looking forward to in the headlines putting her unbeaten record on the line against older horses, likely in the Stewards' Cup at the end of next month. A has a tremendous turn of foot, uh, and she's she, which 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 gives her a decided advantage over the, the the horses that she's running against because when she quickens, she just leaves them behind and, and they have to work hard to get back to her. I think we really see how good she is when she comes up against the, uh, the four year olds later in the year. John O'Brien continues to reel in the big wins in TNT. Let's head now to Canada where the Barbadian jockey Patrick Husbands is a perennial newsmaker. No rider has more stakes wins than he has so far this season at Woodbine. In achieving his 12th added money victory of the 2023 campaign, Husbands was aboard champion trainer Mark Cass's 2-1 bet, Forever Dixie here, the one horse in the Ontario Damsel Stakes, patiently hugging the rail for the entire eight and a half furlong trip. 
and so smartly taking the shortest route to the finish. Sal's Blue Jacket trying to take them gate to wire. Leads by a length to Cello Album, pushed along. Coming forward, though, and over on the outside, love to shop. Forever Dixie's had the run of the race, if good enough. And last is Witch Hazel. They corner three abreast. Out in front, Sal's Blue Jacket with Cello Album, love to shop. Forever Dixie finding a seam up the inside. Patrick Husband's coming. And last, Witch Hazel. Forever Dixie shot through and has been waiting in the wings and was always looking the one to beat. And for Ever Dixie's run away with the Ontario Damsel Stakes and is much the best. A very impressive performance. For Ever Dixie could have won by a lot more. Three lengths. A jockey's record sixth Ontario Damsel Stakes victory this for Patrick Husbands. And for the third year in a row, a Caribbean win in the $150,000 event. TNT's Rajendra Maharaj owned Money for Row winning in 2021. And last year, Husbands scoring aboard Super Hoity Toity. Husbands again with the Ontario Damsel win by three and a quarter lengths over his more fancied Mark Cassie stablemate, the eight to five favorite solo album, 142.96. The winning time for the mile and 16th trip. A quick check in now at Thistledown where the Barbadian Rocco Boyne and the Jamaican Robert Halladine are among the top 15 riders at the Ohio racetrack. Jamaican Halladine now nearing 30 victories in his short USA stint this year. Four wins in the past week, the most unexpected and probably the best of them coming Monday. An exciting come from behind victory in the allowance fifth race aboard the 16 to 1 outsider, Gibby Mike Horn, toward the back of the field most of the trip, but roused here by hardball Halladine for an outside run. Color Bear has made the big move here and has taken a lead. Top of the stretch and Color Bear off the corner in front. Gibby Mike Corn and War on the River trying to catch him. One furlong to go for Color Bearer. Gibby Mike Corn in second. War on the River has flattened out a tad in third. Final 16th to go for Color Bearer. Here comes Gibby Mike Corn. Color Bearer and Gibby Mike Corn. Photo. Very close. What a ride by Halladine, a five-time classic winner in Jamaica, including three 2,000 Guinness victories. His tally of wins this year in the USA, now 28, 25 at Thistledown and three at Mountaineer Park. He'll return to Jamaica mid-October when the Thistledown season ends. Gibby Mike Horn, the third longest shot in the field at 16 to 1 odds, upset by a head owner Halladine in the US $35,800 allowance event, 113.26 the winning time for six furlongs. Our weekly tally of wins for Caribbean racing men in the USA and Canada before we go. I've counted since our last show in the past week, 57 victories. Among them, the former Jamaica champion jockey Christopher Mamdine with a triple on Saturday at Hastings. Four-time Jamaica champion Dane Nelson had three wins on Saturday as well at Century Downs, where the Barbadian rider Antonio Whitehall had four weekend victories. And the Barbadian Safi Joseph Jr., had three weekend wins at Gulfstream Park in Florida, where he is the leading and champion trainer. We've been at the track, covering top stories and exciting races in the sport of kings. Check us out again next week.